after uh, Jimmy Savile and the Newsnight scandal, uh, can we still trust the BBC? Unfortunately, the answer is I'm not sure. Before we can try to work out whether we can trust the BBC, we have to work out why we might have lost trust in the BBC. And I think the reason we might have lost trust in the BBC is because it's lost belief in itself. I think the BBC was hacked to bits by the Hutton inquiry. It lost its chair and its director general. And although it arguably won the argument, um, it lost the war. And, and everything I've heard suggests to me that morale tanked as a result of that. And perhaps more importantly, any sort of sense of bravery, of, 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 of sort of going against the flow, of trying something different, of strutting its stuff went out the window at the same time. The BBC I worked for wasn't like that. It it, I mean, okay, they were a different age, it was a more deferential age, but it had a sense of droit de seigneur about it. It had a confidence, almost an arrogance. And I think you need a confident and arrogant national broadcaster to stand up to all the powerful vested interests in this country. So I'm afraid my answer is the jury's out on that. The, the reason the Newsnight came under our remit, if you like, of investigation was because it wasn't clear um, what the line, that the line the BBC was attempting at this point to adhere to was actually right. Um, there, were, there were problems with what they were saying in public that didn't tally with what I happened to see evidence of in private wasn't necessarily the case. And what I've always tried to say is if I had any evidence like that of any public corporate, especially a, a body as important as the BBC or significant culturally as the BBC, I, I would feel honour bound and duty bound to investigate and to report on that and to see um, what the truth of that was. And I, you know, I would probably do the same thing again if I felt that the corporation I was working for wasn't necessarily being completely clear about, about what, what had really happened. The fact is when we put that program out, it was pretty obvious that a lot of the public wanted to know because you know, we put something out at 10.30 at night, uh, frankly because we wouldn't have got it ready any earlier. We tried, it only just made air then. Um, and it was watched by six million people uh, that's 40% share of all viewers at the time. That's more than Downton Abbey would get on a Sunday night. And, and given everything that happened with Pollard and going over decisions and emails and all the rest of it, I mean, has that led to an even more sort of arse covering culture in the BBC than there was before? Not if I can help or... it. I mean, really, seriously. <laughs> um, yes, of course, there's, got, there's always going to be that culture. It's not, it's, the BBC is not unique in having an arse covering culture. I think most people uh, would recognise such a culture in, in large numbers of media organisations. Uh, and other organisations, if, if your programme makes a mistake, um, you, you are responsible for that mistake. If anything, it's shown uh, that arse covering's slightly pointless. Um, when, when, when you've got a huge arse. When you've got a yes. huge arse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, when, when, you, you know, when your name's at the end of a programme like Panorama or Newsnight, you ain't going to run away anywhere. You, you are responsible for that. It makes me incredibly sad when I get up on a Sunday morning and the BBC have issued a fulsome apology because there's been a tweenie in a yellow wig that looks a bit like Jimmy Savile. That makes me sad, you know? It's like the BBC pick up on that it's because somebody's complained and then they bat it higher and well, then so they, they shouldn't make have it bigger. No. No, I don't think that they should have apologised. It's a tweenie in a yellow wig. It's tweenie. <laughs> it demonstrates a broadcaster's values um, if you uh, look after um, kind of the, the most vulnerable people who you broadcast to. So we had a call on Glee this week, for instance, and in this episode of Glee, one character call, turns around to another and says something like, uh, you're fat, you're a loser, you retard. And it was going to run pre-Watershed. I took the decision to edit out the word retard. I found that offensive. Um, we got a few complaints from people who'd see the, seen the American show and said, how can you remove the word retard? And my response to that is, actually, if you're desperate to see it, we'll, you know, we can email you the script and you can re read the word retard or you can look at the American <laughs> version. But as a broadcaster, I think my values, my personal values and the company I work for, work for have strong values that... Actually, I don't care about the mass of people who think 
our apology is unnecessary. I actually care about someone who's got a, a kid who's mentally ill. Mm. I'm not going to transmit the word retard. So if in doubt, I would probably apologise, to be honest.